Hey students, today we'll be working on a technique called salted painting. Basically you need very few items to create this artwork for this art activity. You will need liquid glue, also known as washable glue. You'll need watercolors. You'll need salt, just some fine table salt and some water so we can change the colors when we're working on the watercolors. So for the salted painting, we can make any sort of form on our cardboard paper. I forgot to mention, you just need cardboard paper. If you have construction paper, that's fine too, but I'd like to use cardboard paper so the glue and the salt can be nicely set against the background. So the, for the salted painting, our main usage for drawing our artwork will be the glue. And as I mentioned earlier, you can use this glue to make flowers, you can make hearts, or you can even write your name. So feel free to use any form of expression. You can even make swirl patterns. So that's that. Let's go ahead and let's get started. I think I want to make a few swirl patterns and some hearts. I might even see if I want to write my name. All right, guys, let's get started. Here's a heart. You can make a large heart. Remember to press your glue against the cardboard. You can do some swirl patterns. It's your cardboard. Feel free to use your expression in mind. We have a bunch of salt here, so we can pour a handful of salt on the glue. Be generous, get in a good amount on your glue. Get a bunch in your hand. We want to make sure the glue is covered with the salt. That's how we're going to apply the technique, remember that. Make sure every bit of the glue is nicely covered. Don't be afraid if some of the salt gets on the outside surfaces. We're here to have fun. We're here to have a good time. I think I am good to go. What do you guys think? All right. You see all this salt on the cardboard? We don't need all of this salt. We're gonna grab our cardboard and shake it off. Make sure to shake off the excess salt, meaning we don't need all the extra salt, okay? You see that? We have all the extra salt out of our glue. Now we have plenty of glue and plenty of salt to create our artwork. Today I feel like using cool colors. Cool colors are purple, blue, and green. Feel free to use warm colors or feel free to use any kind of colors from the art family. We go back, we dip our brush into the water so we can spread it out really well. It looks like I need more water. So for this technique, we need lots of water on our brush. You go paint your brush with the color, put it right back in the water and spread it around. Do you see how the paint is moving around on the salt? So remember what I said, dip your brush in the water, dip your brush in the paint color. What's the next step? Dip your brush right back in the water. We want plenty of water on our brush because look, do you see that? It moves around. You can dip it again. We want plenty of water on our brush. You can even use food coloring. Don't be afraid of getting salt on your watercolors. We can clean that up later on when it gets dry. Do you see that? Again, I go back into the water we want plenty of water on our brush. We want to spread it around. We want to also make sure that we get all the colors 
around the salt so we don't want to have any white spots so this technique is different because normally when we use watercolors we don't know we don't br dip our brush in the water this often but for this technique you take the color on your brush up you go back to the water and then you put it right on top of the salt you go back So what did I do in the beginning? Number one, I put water on my brush. Number two, I put color on my brush. Number three, I go back and put more water on my brush. So basically, and step number four, I pick up more water. Basically, we need plenty of water on our brush. I really like the purple color, as you might have the, the color purple. So you'll see me constantly going back, putting purple, Feel free to use whichever color you like. If you want to leave a little bit of lighter color, lighter purple on some of the sides, that's fine too. Now let's go back. Let's get in some blue. What do we do again? We put our brush into the water. We go directly on the salt. Put our brush right back into the water again. And when you see that the color is loosening on the brush, you go back, pick up some more color. What do we do? Put more water on our brush. We want some rich colors against the salt. Don't be afraid to put water on your salt. As long as you're not dabbing too deeply, we're good, aren't we? Do you see how we have lighter blue on some sides? We have darker blue on some sides. That's called variation. Variation is perfectly fine. Do you see how the salt, the colors moving around? We love that. I love that. This looks great, guys. Let's put a little bit more blue. You can go back, do some touch-ups. And now we have some swirl patterns. Let's try, let's use green. Remember I told you I want to stick with the cool colors? Feel free to use uh, warm for yours, or if you want to do a combination of warm and cool, that's fine as well. I really love green lately. As you might remember, we are in the spring season. Go back. We want plenty of water on our brush, as I've emphasized plenty of times. If you feel like you have plenty of color, then go pick up some water with your brush. So you have plenty of color on my brush. I just went directly into the water, spreading it around a bit. I'm really liking this. It kind of reminds me of some sort of leaves, like a leaf swirly pattern. So once you've picked up the pace, you can go quicker. Ah, see, we need water on our brush. See how I'm going directly into the water and just spreading around. You see it moving here? We love that organic kind of swirl. The green. You can use another color on the other side if you want to, but I'm really liking the green against the blue and purple hearts. I'm 
remember this is your artwork if you want to put different colors in the swirl you can I'm just focusing on green I'm really liking the pop of green against the blue and the purple those are some of my favorite colors especially right now it's spring I'm really loving the green really loving the nature feel right now we don't want to pick up the salt with our brush so let's just lightly dab it we want to lightly use our hands when we're putting the color on top of the salt. Go back. have a little bit left see how that's moving let's make sure we go directly on the salt surface not too much outside of it I have plenty of green in my brush which is why I'm directly going into the water and maybe just a little bit more color because I have some lots of color here see any white spots you can go back with the color of your choice if you want to go back with that same color you were using that's fine too it's really up to you I see some lighter spots here so I'm gonna kind of go back but we don't want to make this too wet either so here we go So that's all there is to it, salted paintings. And when you're finished, you can use a paper towel to lightly dab your, your uh, watercolors so you can remove the salt. I know some of you probably don't want grainy textures next time you paint. So you can pick up the salt with the paper towel, just lightly. So that's really it. Keep in mind that this artwork will take about two days to dry out. And again, you can use any colored background. I decided to use brown, a brown cardboard paper. Could you use construction paper? Sure, but then you need to go light-handed with your glue. If you can find any other sort of cardboard, such as blue or green, I think that'd be nice as well. And keep in mind that you can make any shape with your glue. And once it's completely dry in about two days or so, you can hang this up on a wall. I would love to see that. So I hope you can get started on this artwork and it was great to uh, make this video for y'all. Take care.